Welcome back. I'm Marcus. And I'm... Oh, shit. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Amy. <laughs> Hello, Amy. Hi. This is only Hi. your fifth episode. I know. I, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we start over? <laughs> okay. Start over. <laughs> I was about to say... <laughs> oh. oh, God. All right. See, that's what I need. I need his name tag. That's fine. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> my brain is just like... Okay. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Hey, welcome back. We have some exciting things to talk about today. I'm Marcus. And I'm Amy. And this is Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Hey, let's get into it. Let's talk about after you do the meet and greet. Sometimes we integrate the meet and greet and the first date. But a lot of times those are separated. What do you find that you do you do you do more meet and greets or do you just go on a full blown first date from the get go? I would say it normally starts out as a meet and greet and it lasts several hours. <laughs> so <laughs> I would uh, I would honestly say that most of the time I try to do a meet and greet, but I can I can't even think of one that just was a meet and greet it usually ended up just being like a full-blown date and let if you consider a full-blown date past you know 20 30 minutes well are you guys just sitting there talking over oh, drinks yeah. oh yeah or are you actually doing something like oh so sometimes like we'll just sit uh well you know me i get kind of get lost in conversation you do and it's really easy to just <laughs> keep going and then yeah i don't know and then they'll usually i'll be like okay well it was lovely meeting you. And normally, and not to toot my own horn, they'll be like, well, let's, you want to go grab a bite to eat? Do you want to, you want to go do something? Um, golf, shopping, whatever, whatever they want. I don't know. <laughs> it's different for every person, but normally it does, it meet and greet turns into several hours. I mean, uh, think about with you, um, how long did we sit in that, yeah. in the coffee shop and then in your car? Right. So yeah. that lasted like four hours. <laughs> it, it did carry on, but we were enjoying ourselves and we got lost in the conversation and uh, it worked. Yeah, it did. It yeah. really did. Yeah, I it really find did. that I like to meet them for a drink or for coffee. Yeah. And then to see, just you like to, to see, see if, face. yeah, if, see their face, see the chemistry. Yeah. Cause sometimes instantly when a person walks up, you know, this oh, is not going to work. Absolutely. Like almost instantly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've had, yeah. Who hasn't had a couple of those? You're just like, oh man. <laughs> right. So you don't want to plan a full date or a full evening with somebody that you oh. instantly know. I got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've all had that. We had, we talked about that on the last episode, I believe. Yeah. Horror stories like that. Oof. Catfish. No, thank you. Now I had a, I had an interesting date. We met at, um, Pretty popular little go-to spot in center of town, and they had a nice little bar in the back, and she was the most annoying, in-your-face person on the first date I'd ever met, and I was literally ready to walk out of there. I Like, what was she doing? Like, what she were you was just, in your face? She, she was very strong about her opinions, very opinionated, Oh, didn't yeah. like a lot of things that I was talking about. I couldn't make a connection. Mm. But we drank. You drank. And we drank. <laughs> Liquid courage. And we drank. And all of a sudden, yeah. she looked You're better in- and better. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I think we ended back up at her place. Oh, my gosh. No, you didn't. Yes. Oh, that is horrible. Why and, would you do that? Oh, That's it so- was good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Well, <laughs> she, no, ended up, okay. she ended up being quite entertaining at her place and very memorable. But yeah. then I thought, oh, this girl's not that bad. So okay. I contacted her again when we were sober, and I think we went out one other time. And no, it was bad. It was, yeah, <laughs> it just didn't work. Unfortunately, well, we both got so inebriated that we enjoyed each other's company for that night. But again, no, 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 for oh, the first just time, the, just the one time. I was like, you did it twice. Yeah. What is wrong? I think with even you? one of my friends met her, and they're like, dude. She's got to go. What's up with this girl? Oh, really? Like, That's the worst. Yeah, when but when she's drunk, she's a lot of fun. 
Of course. Yeah. Everybody's a lot of fun when they're super <laughs> drunk. It's like, oh, yeah. I, that's what I can't stand. So, um, you know, like there are some guys that do try to, they don't try to get me drunk. Usually I would say, you know, most of the guys that I go out with, it's usually like one or two drinks. I don't, I don't think that I've ever really gotten plastered on like a first date with someone just because I... I'm, I'm like you. I don't want to make. I don't want. I don't want to make that horrible mistake. That does not sound appealing to me. Uh, waking up, you know. I don't. I don't want it. One. I don't want to stay over at their place because mm-hmm. uh, the next morning, awkward. But that. I mean, I won't do that with anyone really. Um, I'm not into like bar scenes. I'm not into just like hooking up like that anymore. Maybe when I was in my younger twenties, I think I attempted that a couple of times, and it just was very unappealing. But some people like it. I mean, I get it. It gets wild. It gets crazy. Everyone's oh. everyone's guard gets down. It gets hot. It gets heavy. Everyone, you know, just you can do things that. I just <laughs> remembered another first date, first meeting yeah. that I had that turned into one of my crazy what the fuck stories. Oh, my God. They're all crazy <laughs> what the fuck stories. <laughs> so I met this girl on the side and we decided to have sushi. And she shows up and she's a. Uh, Oh, I think she was probably in her thirties, and she had two or three kids. Cute, cute. very yeah. She was a, in a little black dress, mm. so cute. And we got so we sat down in the restaurant, and we were sitting across from each other. And she's like, "No, here, come sit beside me." You know. Aww. So I'm like, "Oh, I like this girl." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we kind of cuddled up, tugging on those heartstrings, <laughs> right? So that kind of broke the ice and made the date f- feel a little better. A little less tenseful. I, I don't actually get too was, nervous yeah, was on say, dates anyway. You've yeah, you've been on enough. Yeah, you, you but it, it's always nice to break the ice. Yeah, and and, and she you did just that. Never, she did that for you. Yeah, yeah, and you just never know how how close you want to get to somebody, how touchy feely you want to get with somebody. You know, yeah. how you want to keep your distance. Sometimes you're trying to figure all that out, and very quickly, you know, we're sitting next to each other, kind of cozied up, have and had a great time. Mm-hmm. Drinks were great. Food was great. She's like, do you do you live close by here? Do you want to go over to your place and hang out? Mm. I'm like, yeah, well, let's let's go hang out. <laughs> let's go hang out. The yeah. night's going well. <laughs> Woohoo! So I said, um, do you want to just follow me? Or sometimes I call him a, a car. I'll, I'll get him a car to the restaurant or wherever we meet. I'll call an Uber or Lyft That's or something. That's so weird to me. Like as a as a a girl as a female, I would be like, okay, if something were to go wrong, I would, I always have to have an escape route. Like I always have one foot out the door. Actually. I mean, think about that. Think about the safety, the safety Mm -hmm. of just anyone. Like, even if you're a guy and you're in another town or whatever, I would have a rental car just because, I mean, in my mind, you never know what you're going to come across. And I mean, it just, but I, I'm always looking to run. I'm a runner. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) But. Well, I always offer. Yeah, I, I'd say maybe thirty percent, forty percent actually accept the offer, but most say mm-hmm. no. I'll just meet you there. Yeah, you just want to you know, trap whatever. them. Like well, a lot of times they don't want the you. They don't want you to know where they live, which oh. is advisable. Well, I mean, but don't you like if you get them a car? Well, you if have I get them a car, get, that's the that's the thing. If I get them a car, they so they they're have not really to have a think, pickup spot. I was gonna say they're not really thinking that through. I don't feel. Well, no, the ones that meet you there. Say no, I'll 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 take my own car there. They're the ones that usually don't want you to know where they live in the beginning, mm-hmm. which is safety. I I get it. Yeah. Because if I order a car, I need an address. Yeah. So, but she met me there at the restaurant, and I said, "Well, do you want to just follow me home? I I don't live far far from here." And she goes, "No, you I'll, I'll ride with you." I'm like, "What about your car?" She goes, "Oh no, I have a driver. Uh, he's 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 <laughs> sitting outside." <laughs> And what? I'll just tell him to wait. Like She has a driver? Yeah. I said, w- w- I'm confused. What do you mean you have a driver? She goes, oh, it's my f- my best friend. He's gay, but we're best friends. Oh, and, my god! You know, he drove me here. Oh, that's a pimp. You no, got pimped. He wasn't, no, he wasn't <laughs> That was a pimp. a pimp. No, let me finish the story. Okay, all right. He was definitely not a pimp. That had to be a pimp. Like, if you, she has a driver, like, come on. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so... I, I never thought of it that way, but I'm pretty <laughs> darn sure it wasn't a pimp. Think about no, it. No, <laughs> wait until you hear the rest of the story. Okay, okay. So we go over to my place, 
And she asked if I have some Tito's, which I did, some vodka. And we started drinking and drinking more. She was a tiny thing and could not really hold her liquor and started getting a little crazy. Anyway, we go in my bedroom. We're starting to mess around, haven't got too far yet. And her phone rings. And she goes, oh, hold on. I think this is my my friend, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember his name. The driver. We'll just call him the driver. <laughs> she goes, hey, uh, he's, he's right outside. Can he come in and use your restroom? Wait, oh, what? <laughs> right outside the house? How, how does how did he even know where I live? She goes, oh, he, he has tracking on my phone. He always knows where I'm at at all times. Okay, now I'm <laughs> oh looking at your face. Oh, my gosh. What, is, what are you thinking? Like, what? Okay, you have to continue this story because that is a pimp. That is a straight up pimp. What is wrong with you? Oh, God. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I'm geez. dying over here. I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. Okay, go. So I'm like, what? Can he use the restroom somewhere else? I mean, I said, fine, he can come in and use my restroom. What? So he comes in, hey, what? and the guy comes in. He's this skinny white guy, gay as the day is long. Mm-hmm. He he seemed, seemed okay. Didn't seem like a pimp to me. I didn't get that vibe out of him. Anyway, she said, this. he's my best friend. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he goes to the bathroom, yeah. and we're sitting there. And he comes out of the bathroom, and she starts talking to him. And like he's trying to walk out of the room to go back to the car, and she's just talk, 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 talking to him. And then she'll come here, and we're both laying on the. I'm laying on the bed. She's kind of sitting on the bed, half naked. And she's here, come here. And he gets closer, and then she starts pulling him into the bed. Here, join us. Come here. Oh my I'm sitting there going, okay, hold on, hold on. She's trying to get like a threesome. I, <laughs> you know, you can. There's do it. other ways. I yeah. guess. Yeah. I'm sorry. She's pretty I, slick, I guess. I, I mean, don't, I don't know why you didn't think that was a pimp in the beginning. That never but, actually crossed my mind, but I know. I just can't. Um, anyway, I was sitting there thinking, slick "Hey, move on her part. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm fine with it, but it's not my scene, <laughs> right? I'm kind of heterosexual woman. You don't have man. to. You don't have to touch a guy. I know, but I didn't want him in my bed with me. It was just so awkward. It was on our first date. Why didn't he use your guest bathroom is what I'm know. not wondering. Like, you have multiple bathrooms in your house. Like, why Why did you even let him into your bedroom? I don't know. You do crazy things when you've got a half-naked girl in your room and a lot of drinks. So, anyway, they start talking. And she goes, hey, can I go smoke a cigarette with my driver? So-and-so. I know. I can't remember his name. Can we, can we go out in the garage? And I said, sure, just go out there. So I'm laying there going, this is turning into an absolute disaster, I'm thinking. And I'm not, you know, I'm not turned on anymore. It's not, I'm not aroused. This is just, it's just not a good situation for me. So they're out there for like 20 minutes smoking. I would have locked the doors. And, 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 lo- and, and, like, and just talking. Bye, guys. So she finally comes back in the bedroom and she starts trying to make out with me. And I'm just, just immediately, and I, I wasn't aroused, and she noticed that. And she goes, "Fine, if you if you're not into this, I'm just leaving." And so she just storms out of the room and yells at him, and they go outside and drive away. Oh, <laughs> but she left her phone in the room. So I'm thinking, "Oh my god!" I'm thinking, "I would have just thrown it outside." I know. I, like, <laughs> so anyway, he, he, com- crazy. he comes back in and tries to get the phone. I would, I can't remember why, but I said, "No, I, I want to talk to her." This is. You know, why do you want to talk to her? I don't know. It was just a oh, weird gotcha. situation. Yeah. So she what comes in, grabs a phone out of my out of my hand, and they storm off and leave. About so this was I don't know. Let's say this is ten o'clock, ten thirty at night. Yeah. So about midnight, she texts me and says, "Hey, I think I left my Jimmy Choo shoes there." <laughs> and sure <laughs> enough, I look and there's these leopard skin looking high heel shoes yeah. in my bedroom and. Oh, Jimmy Choo. Woo-hoo. Yeah, pretty expensive <laughs> shoes. So I said, well, I, I tried them on. They weren't my size, so come get them, and I'll just set them outside on the front porch. <laughs> That's funny. That's <laughs> and sure enough, they came and got them. But, oh, my goodness. And that was the last I ever heard from her. Thank God. <laughs> she didn't want those. So... Her that posse was, coming back to... That was kind of know. a crazy first date. That is... Uh, 
Okay. That was one that I had decided so, to have Marcus, let me ask you this. Tonight. What did we learn from this situation? <laughs> I haven't learned jack shit. <laughs> what did we learn from this situation? When a girl immediately says, hey, I have a driver. <laughs> Run. <laughs> Don't invite her anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Maybe exit that <laughs> exit that situation as quickly and as safely as possible. Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't allow someone <laughs> that says, oh, I have a friend here. Can they come in to use your restroom? Say no. If they have their own vehicle, we should probably not be doing that. You know, they, I mean, they're, you know, you never know. There could be, who knows what some people could do. They could try, be trying to, like, find access to your house. Like, oh, I, I mean, know. there's, yeah. yeah, yeah. So i In the not, beginning, I wasn't the smartest cookie I made a lot of dumb mistakes, and hopefully we won't repeat those. But let me ask you this. Okay. More first date stories. Has anybody ever flown you somewhere on a first date? Yes. To meet them? Yes. And? And um, I had to sign an NDA, so I can't speak oh, about really? it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear. I, it's an, I had to sign an NDA. It's a legal contract. <laughs> I can't say anything. <laughs> You. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, I can tell you this. Um, I cannot tell you the sp- specifics of where it was, who it was, or when it was. <laughs> well, I don't want those. I just want to hear the basic details. Basic details. So started talking to this guy. An hour later, he was like, listen, I, I'm in such and such place. I know you're in such and such place. Would you be willing to, he's like, this is really random. Would you mind if I called you? And we had like a phone conversation and then we could like Skype or something. I was like, sure. So he called me Um, an hour later. We were just like laughing the entire time. So he was like, well, do you mind if I FaceTime you? I was like, yeah, sure. We can FaceTime. Three hours after that FaceTime conversation, uh, he was like, okay. He was like, well, this is kind of weird. And this is definitely something that I've never done before. But would you be willing to come on a date with me tonight? And I was like, tonight? I was like, this is this is a, a week a week night. Like I have to be at work in the morning. <laughs> and he was like, Well, he's like, I know. And I said, I mean, it's it's almost noon. Like I I'm not sure. And he was like, Yeah, he's like, you can just come out. He's like, We're not gonna he's like, I just want to take you on a date. And so, yeah, so I was like, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You only live once. If I'm gonna, Yolo. if I'm gonna die, I might as well be <laughs> flown on a jet somewhere. And well, obviously taken you out. didn't die. How how was the date? Actually, him and I had an arrangement for a long time. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes, a very long time. Yeah, it was actually my very very first arrangement. Wow. Yeah, so it was really amazing. He was awesome. But it, it was, was long fun. distance. Yeah, for a little bit until he invited me to until he got me. Um, got me a house oh okay <laughs> so, i think i know now which guy this was yeah so it was uh, it was just a really interesting it was an interesting interesting situation it was exciting i have been offered that again before in the previous years recent years i was offered that and i just i don't know i, I did it once i don't really care to do it again it would have to be with the right person but i don't know i'm here i'm here for now so, so twice I have flown a first date to meet me in Vegas twice. Why do you keep bringing up Vegas? Because. Okay. Lots of people go to Vegas. Lots of people. And go I to was Vegas. there. All right. And somebody I'd been talking to, we just never met. I talked to her on and off for about six months, I think. Yeah. And she said, "Hey, I'm kid free for the weekend. How are you?" And I said, "I'm in Vegas." And she says, "What? What time is my flight?" It was on a Friday night. Mm. I said, well, there's one leaving at 9.30. She said, all right, I'll be on it. And I bought her a ticket. Oh, wow. And she came to Vegas and met me. Oh, you guys had a fun time. Yes. We ended up going to Vegas a couple more times. Oh. And she has provided some of the most interesting Vegas stories. That's you can, good. You can imagine. She met a buddy of mine. He, he babysat her for a while. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, her drink was Tito's and soda. Lots oh. of Tito's and soda. And the more Tito's and soda that she drank, the more she started accosting strangers. 
<laughs> just and taxi drivers and yeah, we got in some interesting discussions. So let's talk about that for a second, ladies. If you're out there, don't don't show your ass like that. <laughs> like, don't do that. That is just. Oh, that is sloppy, uh, sloppy, so drunk. sloppy. And I mean, you're someday you're going to have someone talking about you on a podcast. <laughs> so funny story about her. Actually, this is not this wasn't funny for about an hour and a half. So I'm playing a poker tournament and she's at the bar with a friend of mine who's quote unquote babysitting her because she's so drunk Ugh. and she's talking to this guy, just sloppy drunk, talking, Mm. flirting, whatever. So I walk up, and this guy's looking at me. He goes, do you know this girl? I said, she's all yours, buddy. (laughs) Anyway, he left. And so it was my friend, and we'll call her Nancy. Oh, Nancy. That that sounds appropriate. (laughs) Yeah, so we'll call her Nancy. (laughs) So my friend is taking care of Nancy. I walk up, and I have a bag, like a... Like kind of a man type satchel bag, and it had ten thousand dollars of cash in there for a poker tournament I was going to play in Mm -hmm. the the main event at the World Series. That was my buy-in. So she is so sloppy drunk. I set the bag on the bar stool. Oh my gosh, Marcus! At the bar, (laughs) this is going to make me sick. Go. (laughs) And we're trying to get her in some state where I can get her to my car. So I basically carry her to my car in the parking lot. We drive across town, go to the hotel room, get checked in, go all the way up to the room. I get her in bed. She's passed out drunk. I look for my satchel. It's not there. Wait a minute. It's so, not with wait, me. Wait, 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 wait. So you... S- I left it at you, the bar. Be- oh, so it's not her fault. Yeah, she distracted the hell out of me. It's a hundred percent her fault. I, I am sitting there trying to carry her out of this <laughs> well, hold casino. On. Wait a minute, you set the bag down. Well, yeah, because I had to 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 wrap my arms around it's, her so I could. It's a hold it's a her satchel. Up. You put the thing over. Well, you. anyway, <laughs> but that's, it didn't make it back to the hotel room. Oh my gosh! Oh and my I had ten thousand dollars of cash in there. Okay, and so I'm. I'm freaking out. I go all the way back to the parking lot of the hotel. It's the longest elevator ride in history, you know, going down to the parking garage. I hit every light going back to the other hotel we were at. And it seemed like it took forever. It was like Friday night. It was traffic. Yeah. I finally get there about an hour later, and I walk up to the bar, and the the bartender kind of recognizes me. I said, hey, I left a satchel here. Did anybody turn it in? And he's like, oh, you were with that drunk girl earlier? I said, yeah. He goes, no. I, he looked around. He goes, no, nobody nobody turned anything in. And it's gone. <laughs> so he goes, security is right over there. And he pointed at this little booth where security was. I go over there, and this guy is sitting up. And he's a little bit higher than me, kind of. The, the, the booth is elevated. So he's sitting in this chair, and I'm kind of looking up at him. And I said, hey. I left like a backpack sat type satchel over at the bar area and did anybody turn it in? He's like, well, let me check. And he's types into the computer. He's like, no, I don't have anything. He goes, well, let me check. And he types in backpack. Nothing comes up. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I can go get more for the entry fee, but it, it's going to sting, right? Then it finally he goes, well, wait, where were you at? I said that bar over there. And I just pointed just across the casino and he reaches down beside him and he pulls up my bag he goes this is this it i said yeah that's it and i look in there and all the money was still there 100 percent of the money was there oh my (laughs) god you are the luckiest (laughs) that is okay so that almost ruined my uh, whole trip the whole weekend the whole month they just they saw that you i've never like i will never go to las vegas i have no zero desire to go to las vegas we're going to vegas i don't want to go to vegas i i don't think vegas is my type of crowd i really don't you've never been i it it is what you make of it yes and it's and it's who you're with the shows are amazing there's a lot of people (laughs) <laughs> there is a lot of people. There's a lot of people, Marcus, and yes. you know me, and I do not like I do not like crowds. I do not like I don't like uh I just I 
I'm not, I'm not that type of person. Yeah. I like, uh, take me, take me to the backwoods. I don't know. Take me to a cabin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, I'll be, I'll be like, I'll go with a serial killer yeah. or like, you know, I'll go out there with them, but I will not go into a crowd. <laughs> like I'm just, I don't like crowds. Now me. let me get straight. This girl yeah. is the sweetest, nicest, kindest girl. And she, she does sober. sober, sober, but man, when she's drunk, it's, it's all like a completely different person. Well, I mean, they do say that's pretty common. Actually. Uh, it's very common. I mean, when I get drunk, how many times do you're like, you are the most annoying person I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, it's super annoying. Like yeah. I don't stop like picking on you and I just poke, 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 poke. Now um, I had another, I had another person I flew to Vegas uh-huh. um, a couple years ago and we had the greatest time. Like we oh, went to you always have a great time. Well, we, and she was, she didn't drink at all. Of course. And we just saw the sights. We went to uh Jennifer Lopez concert. Matter of fact, it was her, 50th birthday to concert tour or something. She was celebrating her birthday all oh, summer long. Lopez. Uh, yeah, 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 Jennifer yeah. Lopez. Lopez. And the concert yeah, yeah, yeah. was amazing. And this girl was from Chile originally. Oh, of course. So she, Yeah, she spoke really good English. Sh- hips don't lie oh, or whatever. No, that's the wrong artist, but uh, kind of. Her hips didn't lie, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, you little dirty dog. But we did all <laughs> kinds of things. We did some virtual reality uh, rides and we just kind of did the town. We went, got pictures taken by the sign. A lot of times when I'm in Vegas, I'm in a cold poker room trying to bluff idiots, and sometimes I'm the idiot. I was gonna say, but <laughs> let's. W- with her, we <laughs> there's a lot of really smart people that I I got to give props to you. Like poker, I've watched it because you're constantly like watching it on the television mm-hmm. and on the telly, and uh, I just <laughs> on the telly <laughs> on the telly. I let what. I, I don't understand the game. I don't get it. I I don't know. Well, you know what's funny? My As I started playing a little bit more competitively on some of the bigger tournaments, the ones that you see on TV back in 2007, yeah. my my parents and my mother actually started getting into it and watching because, you know, her son's there. And she called me up one day and says, you know what? When they go through the feature table and they're talking about each player and their background. These guys are really smart. Like one guy went to MIT, one guy's a lawyer, one guy's like a currency trader. I've met some pretty dumb lawyers. Well, (laughs) but if you're, if you're, if you're not smart and you're trying to play poker against wizards, you're not going to last long. Yeah. I was going to, so is when you're playing poker, uh, this is kind of off subject, but when you're playing poker, is it about, is it about street smarts? Like what kind of smarts are we talking? There's a lot of math, a lot of math. There's there's, oh, so like that movie that, uh, gosh, God, where they count the cards. Yeah, but that's that's blackjack. Oh, okay. Poker, gosh. poker's different, but you'd still got to pay attention to the cards. There's a lot of analysis that goes. You're trying to figure out what my percentages are of catching a certain hand. Okay. There's a lot of psychology involved. Is this guy telling me the truth? Is he bluffing me? Is he lying to me? Does he really have it? But that's why they wear the glasses. A lot of times, yeah. Obviously. Mm-hmm. It's a simple game, but it, mastering it is almost impossible. But there are people that are far superior at the game than you are yeah. or than, than a normal person, and, they're, and they make a, a very good living off of that. Yeah, I've actually met a couple, like, that's all they do. And mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just like, okay, well, that's cool. Like, I don't know. Usually it doesn't last long with them, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just, I don't know. I like to, but it it, it was mind. a nice break inviting that girl to Vegas because I'm sitting there grinding in a poker room for 12, 13, 14 hours a day. And it's absolutely exhausting because you've got to be mentally fit and yeah. on your game. Cause it's like walking through a minefield. You step on a bomb, bam, you're done. Yeah. You're out of the tournament and you're playing for millions of dollars. Yeah. So that weekend happened to be some smaller tournaments. So I invited her up and we just did a lot of touristy stuff. Mm. A lot of fun. Have you, let me ask you this. Have you ever gone on a date with someone that found out that you love to gamble and love to play poker? Have you ever had someone be interested in the same thing or make like a really interesting bet or? Well, I've, I've had to drag one of my dates out of the casino because she couldn't stop. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was an addiction for her. So really, the only other game I really play and and that I can actually win at 
a lot of times is blackjack because there is oh. some skill involved and I can count cards and kind of know where I'm at, at most of the times. So I'll play blackjack and I think I'm, I I was up a thousand dollars at the time and she came in. That yeah. was all profit, so I just gave it to her. She she went out and blew it all in the slot machines in about ten minutes. A thousand dollars. I would have taken that, pocketed it, and went and like right. I don't know, used and, it for and something. And I know she needed money for rent. And, and she just like bills. blew it. Like, yeah, because she wow. she bets maximum on the slot machines, and that's oh the way gosh. you win the big prize. Oh really? So she came back and she had those lost puppy eyes. Like, oh, I need some more. Oh my god. <laughs> so actually, I had won five hundred or eight hundred dollars more. And I said, look. I'm having a good night here. Take this. And sure enough, she went out and blew all that in about 10 minutes. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, like, when do you stop? At what point right. were you going to stop? So I will say, here's my gambling story. Um, at the, how old do you, I think it was like 18 or 21. How old do you have to be in order to get in? It's like 21. 21. So for my 21st birthday, my mother took me to a casino and I played the penny machines that yeah. she gave me. She gave me a hundred dollar bill. You were probably paying one penny <laughs> I, at a time. I did. I was like, okay, I literally lost like maybe $2 in pennies. <laughs> it was like, oh, I, I don't understand this. I don't get why people are so near. Like, when you win the jackpot, it. it pays out a whole $21. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. It just like for me at the, and I, and you know, maybe that's why. And so I, you know, I've only been in like one casino and I, when I went in there, watching how people like watching people sit there and just I know that they've had to like some of the people what I noticed you know the high poker the high people that are in like you know where the they high have, limit area yeah the high where they have the chains and whatnot yeah. like that I understand that I only know that from 21 so <laughs> there he goes there's that movie uh so I I know that happens <laughs> so I knew what that was and uh, that's fine. I don't care about those people. I'm like, yeah, they probably got money to whatever, you know. Uh, but it's like the other, the everyday people that are just kind of sitting there. And here they are. They have worked so hard during mm-hmm. the day. Like they work so hard for this money. And they're just like, they're letting it all go away. I just, I don't understand that. But, you know, props Well, good to for you. It. Yeah, I guess. I don't 99.9% know. 99.9% of the people are negative. But at the same time, though, at the same time, though, here's the problem that I've... So one thing that I've learned from my experiences in this is that you have to be willing to take a risk. And I think that is probably what is going to hold me back. And for other women out there, like, we've got to find a way to be comfortable with that. So... I mean, like you, you're not afraid to take a risk, and that's that's fine. Well, and that's why I play poker mainly because it's a game of skill, yeah. which you can actually have a long term winning record. Yeah. If I'm playing, you know, one of those house games like craps or roulette, there's no way you can be a long term winner. There's no professional craps players. Oh, there's no wait, professional wait, wait. Which roulette one is players. That? Which one is that? That's the one where the they... dice. You got the dice and then the wheel. The dice and the wheel. Okay. Oh, we really need to. Yeah. Cold. No, I'm thinking of the one. Remember the one where the lady blows like Lady Luck. <laughs> she blows on the dice. Yeah, that's craps. That's craps. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. All right. There's no professional house game players, but yeah. there's thousands and thousands, and thousands of, uh, of professional poker players. Yeah. Who that's what they do all for a living because they're good at a game. They're they're better at a game than the other people they're playing. They're not playing against the house. They're playing yeah. against other players. I wish they had. That's like why a, I enjoy poker. So I wonder much. if they have like a um, like a poker series type thing. If they have like professional D and D Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, good lord! That would be cool. <laughs> I would it, totally enjoy that. I would love to go to one of those. Yeah, there's so there's chess players that are obviously much better than oh, other chess, chess players. That would be cool. Yeah. Checkers and other types of board. We should games. go to a chess tournament that would be fun i would love that that would be really fun well we have really gotten off track yeah we have. okay <laughs> all right let's but i think vegas actually is a fun date i don't recommend it for the first date unless yeah. you live in that area or something well you i mean you flew that one girl out for first yeah date. i i had so out of the two that i flew to vegas for first date yeah i mean i'm still friends with both of them i still like both of them one of them one of the dates went much better than the other. I have a lot of stories um, from the drunk one. Yeah, everyone has stories from oh, somebody that's goodness. drunk. Oh my gosh. And and if it was, you know, things got hot and spicy, like you can't 
there's nothing like drunk sex. I'm sorry. <laughs> like it, you just can't like, it's like everyone, the bodies are loose and uh-huh. limber. And I mean, I wake up the next morning and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> I just did some hot <laughs> yoga. I don't know what's going on here, but right. I'm in pain for a couple of days after that, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. I mean, it can happen with anyone. So what do you not like to do on a first day? Oh, I definitely don't like somebody that immediately is asking me to go somewhere, like to go to the bedroom. Or I don't like that. Just like right off the bat? Oh, no, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I've had it happen, and there have been some guys that, you know, I've allowed it to happen with. Uh, when I say some, not very many. Mm-hmm. Like, I am not, like, you have w- dated way more people than I have. I just... Like even I would say this is like a mixture of regular dating and like essay, mm-hmm. like sugar baby stuff. I do not like that period. I think it, I don't know. I just, I don't like feeling used. And so when they do that, it makes me feel really used. It makes me feel like I'm just a piece of meat. And I just, I don't appreciate that. Well, see, that's um, where that's you and me. I get along so well is we, we do like a nice balance. Yeah, exactly. And and that's what people don't get. They're like, oh, well, you know, you're non-monogamous, you're polyamorous, whatever, blah, 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 all these you know, titles that everyone has to label you with. And I'm just like, well, yeah, that doesn't mean that I'm just like going out and like want, I want to feel that. It's not just because of that. Like I have to, like I I personally cannot, I mean, I, okay, so story. So there was this guy that I was seeing, things were great. We were having fun. Um, he was attractive. I really enjoyed his company. Like this was, um, he was, it was, it was an essay thing. Um, at one point though, we started bringing in other girls and I like that. I, I enjoy, I enjoy a female a female's body, just as <laughs> body, just as much as a man they does. They can be very beautiful. Oh, I think women are just so, they're so gorgeous. They're so pretty. Um, I definitely think they need to like tone it back. I think their egos, they need to be humbled a little bit uh, here and there. So whether that's by force or, you know, whatever, <laughs> I don't know. But I just, I think that Girls need to, they need to try to be a little bit more humble with themselves. But anyways, so we started bringing in other girls and it it was really fun. But there was several girls that we would continue to see on the regular. And one of these girls, I could see the pain in her face. And I kept trying to talk to her about it because it it bothered me like I could see the pain in her face like she was what do you mean she was not she should not have been doing the sugar baby stuff I don't think she should have been doing that I don't think that she was mentally stable I don't Mm. think that she was I mean she was doing it I think maybe for the wrong reasons I have no idea um I really liked her in fact I actually ended up dating her like as an actual girlfriend for a long time. You did? I did. But that was like, I told her like, you need to like, you don't need to be doing this. Like, we'll get you, we'll help, I'll help you find like a really good job and blah, blah, blah. So I helped her with all that. Anyways, what had happened was, and this inevitably what <laughs> caused the the beginning of the end with this gentleman, the pain one time, I, I just saw it in her face and I actually, I actually got sick. Like I literally... It's going to sound really gross. I I literally like got sick in my mouth because I could see, like just on her face. I could see it. I could, I could feel it. I don't know. I, so for me, well, like, I, I, I don't understand the pain you're seeing. Like she didn't want to be there. Like she was being she forced not, to do this. She wasn't being, it was on her own. It was her own will, but she clearly, she did not like she was doing it. Like a lot of girls for I the think, money only. Yeah. For the benefits, we'll call Mm -hmm. it benefits. But I think like a lot of girls do that though. There are so many girls out there, Marcus, that do that. Like they, they don't really want to be doing this. They just want to, they're just trying to feel a little bit forced into it, trapped into it because it's their own free will. Sure. But, but then you've got the heavy load of school loans, rent, things that are coming down on you. So sometimes you feel like you're forced to do things that you don't really want to be doing. Well, I think that, or they're just too lazy to get a job. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you need to get a job, like find a job. I, I mean, okay. So during the pandemic, I lost, I lost my job. Mm-hmm. And you know what I did? I was not afraid. I went and applied to a gas station. Luckily, the next day, (laughs) the next day, one of the other jobs came through. But I am not like I'm not above or below anyone. Like I've, you know, you know me, I've made, you know, close to 150,000 a year at one point. So it just like and that was a real job. Mm -hmm. And it just like for that to stop, it just, you know, that was that was a really, really lucky year. But um, anyway, so it just you know, like I'm not afraid to, I guess I, I'm not afraid to try. And it like a lot of these girls, they just don't want to try. They just want to be taken care of. And that's what she was. She was thinking she could handle it mentally. And that's the other thing they get into this thinking, Oh yeah, I, I can do this. I can definitely do this. It is so hard. It's a mindset. It is. Oh, it's it tough is for many so people. hard. I mean, how many times have I come to you and just been like bawling my eyes out, just being like, oh my gosh, I feel so used. I feel, I feel horrible. I just, I feel like I, I can't do enough for people. I'm not like, I'm not, what is this? Like, what is going on? Yeah, you felt a lot of pressure because you're trying to please too many people. Yeah. And it just like, and, and then I forget about myself and I forget about the self care. And, you know, a lot of these girls think they can handle it. And that's, it takes, it takes a very strong, strong person. Like you have to build thick skin, but at the same time, like the guys, the guys are also what trigger that response because they don't, they forget that we are also human Mm -hmm. and that we, it is just a layer of skin that we have to put on ourselves. And so they will bash you. They will try to belittle you. They'll try to like, it's, it's a power trip for them sometimes. And so for her, she just, she was not mentally able to handle it. And I saw it and it just made me, it made me sick. Cause I mean, we tried talking to her about it, but she was just, she's stubborn. Whatever happened to her? Stubborn, (laughs) redheaded, little (laughs) sweetheart. (laughs) What happened to her? So I actually ended up, leaving. I had to leave. I had to go to another job elsewhere. And I ended up leaving and her and I just kind of like went our different, we went our separate ways. I mean, there was just, I mean, that's what happens with all my, do you, do you know I whatever happened to her? Well, personally? I don't, I don't have, you know, I don't have any way of contacting, you know, I don't have any of like, I don't have any social media. I'm not into any of that stuff. So I, I'm not too sure. Do I think about her a lot? Absolutely. The last time that I actually, I didn't hear from her directly. I actually, her mom called me and had asked me if I would be willing to like take her. She was like, she's just, you know, kind of fallen off the wagon. Um, and I was like, listen, I'm, I'm really not in a place. I mean, I'm not in a place or a position right now to be taking care of someone like that. I said, I myself am having to just completely reevaluate my life and, you know, I, it'd be really hard and unfair for me to try to take that on for someone else. Cause yeah. I, I don't have the strength. I just don't have the strength to do that. Yeah. It's tough. I've met quite a few people that have some mental issues that they're trying to work through. I think we all some have addiction men- issues. Yeah. Oh, addiction is big. Oh my God. There's so many, there's, addicts. there's, you know, everybody has their own baggage Yeah, and you're going to find a wide variety of that on the site. Well, you're going to find a wide variety of that anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. I mean, but. even just regular dating, there's so many people that have issues. And I think people, they're just too proud to like, I have anxiety. I have depression. I have, I mean, I have a lot of issues. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I have, yeah. So I have like, I have, I think a, we, we know, all experience those in different. Yeah. yeah and, volume, um, intensities. Yeah. And I'm like considered, what did they call it? They, well, they call it manic depression, but in reality, it's actually bipolar. So I am bipolar. It's not, it's not like on the extreme of like, oh my gosh, you know, it's definitely like I go from like really high, high and like super energetic mm-hmm. to like I crash really mm-hmm. hard. You know, during those times, I really, you know, you know me, I try not to see anyone. I just try to like, I have to, I have to re- do self care, right? Um, so that can be triggered sometimes. Yeah, I've I think met, it, yeah, I've met a lot of girls that have a lot of problems, actually. They all actually tend to have, like, whether it be they're completely uncomfortable with themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of girls out there that just, like, need constant valid. And then I call those daddy issues. Well, once we identify what our issues are, you know what a good resource is, is YouTube. 
you can type yeah. in anything that you're feeling, any emotion, whatever. Yeah. And some there's going to be lots of videos on that I would subject. Also, go to groups. Like, I don't understand why people are so afraid to go to groups. Like, women's group. I went to a women's group. Like, I went to a. It was like a a three month like course, and every. I think it was every Thursday we met and we just like talked about, we talked about a lot and we watched these videos about like different therapists and stuff. And like they're, you know, they had this like program set up Mm -hmm. and like it was this process that walked us through everything. Holler to Brene Brown. She's my favorite. I love her. So I, I don't know. I think that people should seriously consider going to groups, highly condone it or, you know, like have a little best friend get on a podcast and talk about your problems, <laughs> uh, Marcus. <laughs> right. We do have a lot of fun. And boys, sometimes we go off in areas or directions that we didn't plan on. Oh, like that's today. The, that's the best. <laughs> so I think this is a good spot to wrap it up, though. I think Boy, so, Boy, I have too. so many things written down that I want to talk to and we didn't even touch. So we're going to have a lot of fun on our next episode. Next episode, yes. We've got more funny stories. I didn't think it was that funny at the time. You were laughing your ass off. I Which one? I, on the uh, pimp. Oh, the pimp. Oh, I my I still gosh. don't think this guy was the pimp. I, I, what else would you, I mean, come on. <laughs> he was but, the gay best friend. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm yeah. the gay best friend. Well, he, he played the role perfectly. You know he what? He had me convinced. The next time you introduce me to a girl, I swear, I'll, I'll drop you off and be like, hey, listen, I'm <laughs> Kevin Driver. My gay best friend is in the car. She would like to meet you. <laughs> like, let's just see what happens there. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see how far away they run. <laughs> like you would, any normal person would run, <laughs> but not you. Not you, Marcus. You stuck in uh, there. I was a you little were, younger, <laughs> a little more naive. You were so willing. I, uh, I thought for sure that was going to lead with you actually allowing the guy in your bed. <laughs> that would have been, that would have been great. No, the whole situation was so uncomfortable. I was just ready for it to be over. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been ready for it to be over when yeah. she immediately said there was somebody that drove her. <laughs> but yeah. so I that's guess okay. That's... I'll give you a hard time. I just care about you. I just like giving you a hard time. And I guess that's one of the many stories which prompted me to, to start this show and this podcast so we could yeah. talk about those and entertain yeah. our audience and yeah, obviously yeah. entertain you because <laughs> yeah. you hadn't heard that story before. No, I haven't. That was oh, funny. I've got a few more. I know. I know. I bet you do. You are... The best storyteller ever. If you want to tell us your story, we'd love to hear from you. Go to our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com. Yeah. Leave comments about the show. I want to hear your stories. And hell, we'd even like to have you as a guest. We can do it through, we can do it remotely or on site. So let us know. And we already have a couple people that have been interested actually in wanting to do that. Yes. Uh, a couple men anyways. The women we get, but men, we would like you to join us. Um, we would love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, we always like hearing the other sugar daddy point of views because yeah. I'm just one and person. And don't be afraid. You know, like the biggest thing is, is uh, I'm sorry, I'm going off tangents here. I don't want to go back to my schoolwork. <laughs> so, you know, the biggest thing I would say for men is uh, what's their biggest concern? Because you've had a couple guys that have already kind of said, oh, well, I don't really want to uh, address that real quick. Well, they want to stay anonymous yeah, because it's still taboo. Yes, absolutely. And a lot of men are in high profile positions. Yes. So it's harder to get the men. But even then we also, you know, like uh, men, if you're, whether you're monogamous, non-monogamous, like it doesn't matter to us just mm-hmm. because, just because we're not exclusive doesn't mean that you don't, you know, we want to hear everyone. So yeah, everyone, yeah. situation is unique. Exactly. And so we if, hear you, all points if of you. you have a sugar baby and you married her, we would love to hear from you. Like, yeah. how did that happen? I mean, uh, and it me happens a lot. Tips, tricks and whatever. Right. No, I don't, I don't want to get married, but okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that was great. Great episode. So, all right. Until next time. All right. Bye guys. We'll see you. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.